Welcome back. We've reached the end of the month, so this represents the last devotional of Relationship Goals by Pastor Mike Todd. So stay tuned. You ready? Alrighty, the subject that we are discussing today is you gotta love yourself, so let's get started. In some of his most famous words, Jesus said, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important, love your neighbor as yourself. Matthew 22 verses 37 through 39. This shows us the connection between having a relationship with God and having relationships with people, as we saw back in Devotional 1. But let's look closer at the second greatest commandment. Notice that it says, love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus drew a definite connection between our love for others and our love for ourselves. Most of us spend so much time hating the things about ourselves that we don't realize we're crippling our ability to love others. There's no way you can figure out how to love somebody else when in a relationship if you have not first figured out how to love yourself. Some of us treat ourselves so ugly. We settle for way less than what we know we deserve. We violate our bodies and our hearts and allow others to do the same. We use our own words to put ourselves down constantly. Well, consider this. If you devalue yourself, then you will inevitably end up treating your neighbor or even your spouse the same way. In order to learn to love yourself the way God intended, you have to build a relationship with God, who is love. Remember, your relationship with Him is your ultimate relationship. But then loving yourself means accepting who God created you to be, as hard as that may be for you. It means taking the time to find your fulfillment in Him and realizing that only He can fill the emptiness you feel inside. The way God created you was not a mistake. Remember, he made the human race and he saw that it was good, quote unquote. Genesis 1, 31. He calls you his masterpiece, according to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. He wants you to see yourself the way he sees you, loved and valuable. Let's go to Psalms chapter 139 and look at verses 1 through 24. O oh Lord! You have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you, for you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. 
and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, your eyes saw my substance, yet being unformed. And in your book, they all were written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, there would be more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Oh, that you would slay the wicked, O God! Depart from me, therefore, you bloodthirsty men, for they speak against you wickedly. Your enemies take your name in vain. Do I not hate them, O Lord, who hate you? And do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with a perfect hatred. I count them my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. And see if there is any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Matthew chapter 22 verses 34 through 40. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. Then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him and saying, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Once again, this has been another great devotional. So I received a lot from this devotional. Uh, one thing that really sticks out is how Pastor Todd spoke on how you must love yourself in order to learn how to love others. Uh, for me, this made me think about the importance of uh, before you uh, get married or enter into any relationship, don't waste the time solely pining over the relationship, but learn to love yourself. Uh, this is very beneficial for many reasons. Uh, one, you develop a standard and you understand how you want to be loved. So then it lets you know what you're going to receive or what you should look out to receive. And then two, uh, we go into marriage with the biblical definition as for why, meaning you want to love on someone so deeply that it reminds them of the love God shows them. And so you learn that while single or learn that before you enter into relationships, whether it be with a best friend, a co-worker, or whoever. So I thought that was really a great um, uh, point that Pastor Top focused on. Also, when the Pharisees and the Sadducees, you know, got upset regarding what um, Jesus was preaching and sought to trip them up, I love how um, Jesus uh, told them on how you're supposed to love God and also how you're supposed to love uh, your neighbor. And so you would have thought that they would have took a moment to consider, okay, am I loving Jesus the way I would want someone to love me or am I solely seeking to trip them up because either I have a jealousy or I want to be vindicated but when we desire to uh, have relationships with others, uh, then our first priority has to be uh, considering, is this the way God would have me treat the other person? It's interesting, the devotional that we did um, before we started this, uh, I, I think about where uh, John the Baptist was uh, basically schooling one of his disciples who yes. was trying to come at him with the whole... Uh, that that guy you were talking about, um, he has more followers than you do. He's he's baptizing, you know. The, um, uh, of course, this was referring to Jesus, and John kind of put him in check a bit, and uh, basically let him know that, you know, 
I'm I'm the best man in this in this marriage, and Jesus is the groom. I'm just preparing the way for him. Yeah. And I I and I I have to decrease so he can increase. And yes. even Apostle Paul knew that concept quite well. And when you're in that position of humbling yourself before God and giving Him praise, you understand the love that He epitomizes. And guess what? Your own cup gets filled. And you know the love that he has for you and that let alone you're able to pour it out to others. But um, I noticed, well, I'll say this, when I was young, I had a lower self-concept about myself and that was lined up with me not knowing how much God loves me. I always looked to outside circumstances or outside sources for an opinion about me. And that was just a game that the enemy had played on me as a kid. But reading the Word and coming into this personal relationship with God by faith in Jesus Christ, I know that I am valuable, I know that I am loved, and I know how I have to treat others because of how God has treated me and loved on me. I have no excuse but to love others. And it makes me wonder, a lot of people that are harsh to others, and uh, and will be mean to others and not show grace to others. I can't help but think, but that's how they think God treats them. And if that if that is who you refer to as God, all I have to say is, if it don't line up with the Bible, then it doesn't represent how God loves at all. That's right. So we hope that you've enjoyed this devotional as much as we have. Sadly, it's come to the end, but it doesn't have to end for you. If you would like the book that this devotional is based on, please see the description box below for ways to purchase it. And we'll be back next month with another devotional. So check out our Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube page to know what's coming up. We'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.